Welcome back to Uncensored. Israel's ambassador to the UK has emphatically rejected any prospect of a two-state solution. Here's what she told Sky News' Mark Austin. Is there still a chance for a two-state solution? I think it's about time for the world to realise the Oslo paradigm failed on the 7th but, of October and we need to build a new one. And in but, order to build a new one... does that new one include the Palestinians living in a state of their own? Does, think, is that what it includes? I think the biggest question is what type of Palestinians are on the other side? This is what Israel no, realised on the 7th of October. Though? The answer is absolutely no. Well, her comments followed a stark warning by President Biden that Israel's indiscriminate bombing, as he put it, in Gaza is weakening international support. And the Prime Minister Netanyahu's right-wing government is making the prospect of peace increasingly impossible. Joining me now is Mark Regev, senior advisor to the Israeli Prime Minister. Mr Regev, thank you very much indeed for joining us again. Uh, just start, first of all, if we could, with um, Israel's ambassador to the UK, uh, Zibi Hotoveli, coming out very strongly in this interview with Sky, in which she said there's, there's no prospect of any two-state solution. And that's gone around the world. Um, do you agree with that? I mean, is that it? Is, that's, that's done? And is that Israel's position now? Well, we're obviously not close to peace at the moment. We're fighting a war against Hamas. And, uh, and we're focused on winning that war. But in a long-term arrangement, we have a formula that is uh, simple and it works, I believe. And that formula is as follows. The Palestinians should have all the rights, all the uh, capabilities to govern themselves, and they shouldn't have the powers that can hurt or threaten Israel. I think that's a sensible formula. So that they shouldn't have their own state? Well, it depends how you define the term state. I'll give you a question. Well, should they have the question. same rights as Israel, for example? Well, I'll ask you the following question, Piers. Should the Palestinians, if they have a state, should they be able to sign, let's say, a military agreement, a military treaty with Iran? Should they be able to have an army, an air force? Should they have all those military powers that could theoretically threaten the state of Israel? And the answer, in our view, is clearly no. Why should they be have prohibited be limitations. from having... Yeah, but my, my, my question would be, why should they be prohibited from having exactly the same rights as a state to Israel? Wouldn't that be ultimately the way you actually achieve peace? Not allowing the Palestinians to have the same rights as Israelis has just not worked, has it? I mean, demonstrably not worked. On the contrary. If this is going to work, it has to be based on realism. We can't base peace on assumptions that just aren't based, founded on reality. And Yitzhak Rabin, the Prime Minister of Israel who wanted to make peace with the Palestinians, who was the Prime Minister at the time of the signing of the Oslo Accords, he gave a speech and he was very clear. He said that the Palestinians will have less than a state. Yitzhak Rabin said, the man who was shot for his efforts to move forward on the peace process. He said that the future Palestinian areas will have to be demilitarized. He said the Jordan Valley, that area on the eastern edge of the Palestinian territories, would have to remain under Israeli control. The idea that a Palestinian area will have to be demilitarized in any future uh, settlement, that's common sense. And it's been reported, and the ambassador said yesterday the same figure, that uh, the Israeli Defence Forces so far killed 7,000 Hamas terrorists. Uh, do you agree... Is that the figure that you think is correct? And if so, again, I think I've asked you this before, how do you know? Well, this is what our, uh, our intelligence is telling us. This is more or less the figure. We've been hitting Hamas and we've been hitting their military machine very uh, hard, and we will continue to do so until we've dismantled their military machine and taken out their top command structure. How many civilians have you killed? Well, once again, that number is, uh, we're relying here on, on Hamas numbers. We don't want to see a single civilian killed. You know that, Piers. Well, what does your intelligence tell you? If it's so sure about the number of Hamas that have been killed, how many civilians have been killed? You must have the same intelligence, surely. Uh, I, I, I agree, but I told you I wasn't sure of the first number either. We're working on approximations. What I can tell you as a matter of policy is we want to keep the number of civilian casualties to the bare minimum but we face an enemy that deliberately wants to uh, see those numbers rise because they see that as a way to pressure the world, to pressure Israel for a ceasefire because that's the lifeline for Hamas. We are destroying Hamas spears. In the north, we're seeing more and more Hamas uh, terrorists surrender. You've seen pictures today 
from a particular hospital where we saw 70 Hamas fighters come out with their weapons above their heads and surrender to the IDF. But what we're also uh, seeing, Hamas Mr. Rogge, if, I may, if I may just pick you up on that, we're also seeing the President of the United States, your biggest ally, coming out and saying that Israel is using indiscriminate bombing. Now, that is a breach of international law. He's basically accusing you of committing war crimes. So we are not carpet bombing the Gaza Strip. We are not indiscriminately targeting... Uh, uh, Why does uh, America's uh, president houses? think you are? Well, I think the people who are familiar with the information know that we have a rigorous process of target are you selection. Are saying he's, he's not getting good enough intelligence? I, I don't know because his remarks weren't recorded, they were just reported. And I don't know exactly how he said it or in what context. Uh, but I do well, know. Well, he used the phrase indiscriminate bombing, and as you know, that is a war crime. If that is the case, so that is that, that is would be a war that crime. is not correct. That is not correct. Israel does not indiscriminately bomb Gaza. You can actually see the pictures. You see a house that is standing next to a house that has been destroyed. When there is a Hamas target, we go after that target. We do not. I repeat, do not indiscriminately bomb in Gaza. CNN has reported today that 40 to 55 percent of the 29,000 air-to-ground munitions. Uh, used by Israel have been unguided dumb bombs, uh, which have a lack of precision and therefore expose a much higher threat to civilians in densely populated areas. Is that figure correct? No. First of all, I would reject the, 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 the use of the term dumb bombs. There are different types of munitions. But, and we don't target a, a, a facility, we don't target a site unless there is clear intelligence that there is a Hamas target that needs to be taken out. I want to stress that again and again and again. We have rules of stages that must be, uh, 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 must be met before we target, before we use munitions. There's, there's a process of identification, of intelligence analysis, of then a discussion, what is the correct munitions for that particular target? And only then will we act to destroy the target. Uh, new British Foreign Secretary David Cameron, former Prime Minister, of course, has come out today and said that extremist settlers, by targeting and killing Palestinian civilians, it means on the West Bank, are undermining security and stability for both Israelis and Palestinians. Israel must take stronger action to stop settler violence and hold the perpetrators accountable. We are banning, this is the UK, those responsible for settler violence from entering the UK to make sure our country cannot be a home for people who commit these intimidating acts. Strong words from Mr Cameron. Your response? Well, we, we, we're, as a government, we're opposed uh, to any sort of vigilante violence and we will arrest people who are involved in it. From our point of view, anyone who, who acts that way is acting against the law and we'll bring the justice system down against them, we'll make arrests and people will go to jail. But I think it must be said that if one looks on the violence in the West Bank, and of course we condemn and we act against vigilante Jewish violence, but the overwhelming majority of the violence, 99% of it is in the other direction. And that has to be, it has to be put in perspective. What does your we intelligence no tell you? Do your intelligence figures, what do they tell you in terms of the number of Israelis killed on the West Bank by Palestinians since October the 7th? And conversely, the number, had... of, number of Palestinians killed by Israelis? So first of all, we had that terrible attack in Jerusalem just last week, which you'll recall. I just wonder what, whether you Hamas... know what the, the relative figures are. No, no, we've taken out many more Hamas terrorists because what we've tried to do over the last uh, few weeks since this crisis started... I thought started, Hamas didn't operate on the West Bank. I've be, been repeatedly assured Piers, of that. of course it does. Hmm. Piers, of course they operate on the West Bank. They're not the government on the West Bank, the way they are in Gaza. So what but are the numbers You have Hamas then? cells. You have Hamas cells across the West Bank. Right, but uh, what are the numbers, Mr Hamas... Regev? How many Palestinians have died on the West Bank since the start of this? And how many Israelis? Uh, I can't give you a figure. I, I didn't bring that to the interview and I apologise. Maybe you have a figure for me. I just know that it's... it's I don't have the precise numbers, but I know it's massively yeah. higher number of Palestinians. Yes, it is. Killed. But that, but once again, we're not talking about civilians. We're not talking about uninvolved people. But many of them are civilians. Hamas terrorists. And, and no, they're I disagree. Being, and honestly... We are, they, they we are see, being a surgical... Look, there are, listen, I, surgical. As, you, as you know, I've always said Israel has a right to defend itself after what happened. I stand by that. The proportionality of that response, I think, is becoming increasingly concerning to everybody, including the American president. Um, but I think on the West Bank, it is inarguable that the behaviour of these settlers, the extremist settlers, is completely out of control now. And surely you would see that that is, aside from everything else, that is the least justifiable part of all of this, isn't it? But I'm not justifying it. 
neither is the government of Israel. When, if people are acting in a vigilante way, uh, the state will act against them. They'll be arrested and they'll go through the courts and if they've committed crimes, they'll go to jail. There's no excuse for it. No one's justifying it. All I'm saying to you is the government of Israel acts firmly against uh, uh, extremist violence. But to be fair, I can ask you, does the Palestinian Authority on the West Bank, do they act against their extremist violence? And the answer is no. Do you know, we're talking, we're, we're, what is it? We're close to 70 days since the October 7th massacre, and the Palestinian Authority, the so-called moderates, have yet to condemn that terrible, atrocious attack against civilians. That's the difference. Okay. We condemn extremism. We fight extremism. What do they do? Last time you came on, I asked you whether we could have an interview with Prime Minister Netanyahu. He's not given one yet to any European television network, as far as I'm aware, outside of Israel, and, uh, and he's also talked to American networks. I ask you again, will he come and talk to us? I, I, I have to tell you, he hasn't done an interview at all since we spoke last. So right. don't feel discriminated against Piers. He hasn't done a single interview. Uh, when he starts doing other interviews again, your name will come up. Thank you. Mr Ruggier, thank you very much indeed. Appreciate it. My pleasure, sir.